Well, we have another incident of uh, terrible violence in uh, Israel. So this one is in Jerusalem. Uh, two uh, Palestinians, uh, Ghassan and Odai Abu Jamal, their cousins, uh, walked into a synagogue and literally butchered some people. Uh, they had guns, they had knives, and they had axes, hatchets. And they killed four people. Uh, three of them happen to be Americans as well as Israelis, and one is British, so of course the U.S. government is strongly condemning it. We would have strongly condemned it no matter what their nationality was. Uh, of course, the Israeli government's in a justifiable rage, uh, and even the Palestinian leadership, Mahmoud Abbas, has condemned it very strongly. Okay, so everybody agrees, of course. Well, what are you going to do? Not condemn it? Obviously, it should be condemned in the strongest possible language. Let me give you some details on it, uh, and then we'll begin to analyze. Uh, two Palestinian cousins armed with meat cleavers and a gun stormed a Jerusalem synagogue during morning prayers Tuesday, killing four people in the city's bloodiest attack in years. Police killed the attackers in a shootout. So, you know, they're dead as well, so that's six dead overall. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to respond harshly, unsurprising, describing the attack as a cruel murder of Jews who came to pray and were killed by despicable murderers. Okay, fair enough. Now, let's give you some background on that. Uh, much of the recent uh, violence, uh, Associated Press explains, stems from tensions surrounding Jerusalem's holy site, referred to by Jews as the Temple Mount, because of the Jewish temples that stood there in biblical times. It is the most sacred place in Judaism. Muslims refer to it as the Noble Sanctuary. It is their third holiest site after Mecca and Medina in Saudi Arabia. Now, um, a lot of people have been agitating to take down the mosque there and reinstitute a Jewish temple. That might lead to Armageddon, <laughs> and uh, I'm not really in favor of that. I don't really give a damn about either one of those, their religions, and I don't care what Yahweh or Allah promised any of them. I just don't want a worldwide war and a catastrophe that that would cause. More background. The site is so holy that Jews have traditionally refrained from going there, instead praying at the adjacent Western Wall. Israel's chief rabbis have urged people not to ascend to the area, but in recent years a small but growing number of Jews, including ultra-nationalist lawmakers, have begun regularly visiting the site, a move seen as a provocation. Well, that's because it most clearly is a provocation. Now, the people who were murdered here were Osho Orthodox Jews. Now, in no way, shape, or form is any innocent civilian being killed ever justified, and I don't want anyone going in that direction, even 1%. Now, what I'm explaining to you is the context in which all of this violence happens. If you can't understand that, and your mind is too simple to comprehend that, you should go watch another show. So when you're talking about the context, understand that there are these guys who are saying, let's rip down one of your holiest mosques, let's put a Jewish temple there instead, and then when people react poorly to that, now, their reacting poorly enrages me. I mean, poorly is an understatement, because it's always the fundamentalists that lead to violence. Fundamentalists on both sides. Now, in this case, it's Palestinian fundamentalists who go in there and literally rip these people apart, right? I don't, again, I don't care what you think Allah says. It doesn't give you a right to butcher those people, right? But everybody now in Israel is shocked and chagrined. I, wow, look at these barbaric Palestinians. I can't believe they did that. I hate it, I despise it, but am I shocked? I'm not shocked. And you could say that that's a criticism of the Palestinians, that I should be shocked anytime anybody does anything like this. It is what it is, okay? Now, in terms of whoever you think I'm blaming more for the attack, even though I keep saying over and over, I blame both sides for causing this situation overall. I don't blame both sides for these particular murders. Now. Uh, let me give you background from Reuters. Over the past month, five Israelis and a foreign visitor have been killed by Palestinians, either run over in a vehicle-based attacks or stabbed. About a dozen Palestinians have been killed, including those accused of carrying out the attacks. Now look, there weren't big headlines when the other five Israelis were killed, because this is particularly gruesome and, and it happened in one uh, setting, right? And you see the blood everywhere and you see the hatchets, etc. There also certainly were not big headlines when more Palestinians were killed. The 12 Palestinians killed in this set of circumstances. Now, when over 2,000 Palestinians were killed in the latest incursion to Gaza, there were big headlines. So that was covered uh, by all the press in the world. There's no question about that. But of course, again, the Israeli government there said, we didn't do that. But 
actually you did, you pressed the button, you killed those people, but you say, no, it was all Hamas's fault, they made us do it. Now if the Palestinians in this case say it's the Israeli government's fault or ultra-Orthodox Jews' fault because they made us do it, well, no one would take them seriously, right? You would say that's ridiculous. No, you went in there with a hatchet and you killed them, right? But when uh, Netanyahu says it about his bombings, people find it perfectly acceptable. Interesting. Now, let's go to the uh, despicable people over at Hamas. Hamas, the militant Palestinian group that runs the Gaza Strip, praised the attack, of course. When you know you chop people to pieces, that's something you should praise. Well done, Hamas. Nice job. Like, you know, not only are, are you barbaric when you do that, but how do you think the, view, the world views you after they see pictures of blood and hatchets, etc., and you say, job well done? See, if you want to help the Palestinian people, and I care about them, I care about the Israeli people and the Palestinian people, I don't care for either side's leadership. If you want to help the Palestinian people, praising this attack is not the way to do it. In Gaza, dozens took to the streets to celebrate, Jesus, with some offering trays full of candy. In the southern town of Rafah, women and school children waved green Hamas flags and a loudspeaker praised the attack. So now look, that's a lot of Palestinians celebrating and that's not just Hamas. And now of course it's not all Palestinians, it's that minority that were in the streets, but that is very disconcerting. Now why do you think we've gotten to a point where people are celebrating this kind of gruesome act? Might it be that they're frustrated? No, no, you can't say that because then you think that some people will interpret that as justifying it, etc. Even though I've just said a thousand times that's not the case. What I'm telling you is, you can't occupy people for how long has it been? How many decades has it been now? With no hope of relief, Netanyahu will not go to the peace table. He just says, okay, I will go to the peace table if you give me everything I want and nothing that you want. Now, he knows that's unrealistic. Meanwhile, he's building more settlements as we speak in the West Bank. He's taken more parts of East Jerusalem, and now there's talk of destroying one of the holiest mosques in the world. Again, for the billionth time, I don't really care about the mosque. I think it's all voodoo. All the religious stuff is voodoo, okay? But obviously, they care greatly, and that will lead to great tumult, conflict, violence. And then people will be shocked and chagrined again. You might want to solve this by going towards peace. A two-state solution. Do these people look like they can live together? I mean, what, what, what's the answer? Permanent apartheid, is that an answer? And then you're gonna be shocked every time there's a violent attack? Is the answer a one-state solution? That doesn't make any sense. There's the, the only thing that a one-state solution can do, there's two possible options there. One is, you do a democracy, and it no longer becomes a Jewish state, and at some point, Palestinians might run it. Does Israel want that? I'm gonna guess they don't want that, right? But there are a lot of Israelis talking about one-state solution. So what do they mean? They mean we run the place and you work for us and you're, you know, in our ghettos like Gaza Strip and you know your role and your no role is to be, uh, to bow your head and to be ruled by us. Does that sound like a solution that might work in the long run? It's got to be a two-state solution. And then I'm not in the camp of don't build walls. You build the walls in the right place. You don't take more Palestinian land and go, oh, I happen to build a wall there. You do an agreement, and once you do, build the highest wall the world has ever seen. <laughs> Make the Chinese go, wow, now that's a great wall, okay? Because I don't want these people chopping themselves to pieces. Look at the a rally now in Gaza. Look at this picture. Those are two killers behind them. People showing up with hatchets. Ah, Jesus, man, makes me want to vomit. And again, my God, you want to evoke sympathy for Palestinians who are living under this grotesque occupation. You think you're going to do that by showing up with a hatchet? How stupid are you? How stupid are you? Okay, now meanwhile, of course, the Israelis, they also pose with weapons, but that's treated as, you know, oh, that's fun, they're doing their service. Hey, we're smiling by a tank. I'll have you know that that tank kills a lot more than hatchets do. But that's acceptable in America. We're used to tanks. We're used to high-powered weapon like this. The good guys have weapons like this. The good guys kill people uh, thousands at a time, and there's no accountability for that. It's just you show up with a hatchet, everybody hates you, including me. <laughs> there's a lovely woman sitting on top of a tank. <laughs> Everybody's having fun. Hatchets kill four at a time, and they are horrible, horrible. And we could visualize it, and you can see the attack, and it makes you sick, right? But those tanks blowing people's heads up, tearing them from limb to limb, 
the jets that they fly with the smiles on their faces that drop bombs that kill hundreds and eventually thousands. You should also be sickened by that. There is an answer. The answer is end the occupation, do a peace deal. Palestinians, you will not get a right of return that you want 100%. You're all going to go back to Israel and reclaim your land. That's not going to happen. Get it out of your head. And Israelis, you don't get to say, I want everything I want, and I'm not going to give you anything in return. That's not how negotiations work. Now, if you, both sides are not happy with that, and they'd like to continue this war, all right, keep showing up with tanks and hatchets and blow each other to simmer, smithereens. But this is not the path. This does not get you to the answer. You know it, everybody knows it, and apparently some people, including in Hamas leadership, and including definitely in Israeli leadership as well, are comfortable with this. Well, I think Netanyahu views this as, we're winning, my poll numbers are great, that Gaza incursion did wonders for me, I keep agitating Muslims, my uh, poll numbers go up, and I don't really want a peace deal. I want to grab more of East Jerusalem. I want to grab more of the West Bank. And I'm in the middle of grabbing it right now. Well, then, Netanyahu, you're saying when things like this break out, that it is part of what you are comfortable with. You anticipated it, and it happened. So now please spare me the fake outrage. 